Let ABC be a triangle with side lengths AB less than AC less than BC, and I the center of each inscribed circle. Draw a line parallel to side AC and is also tangent to the circle. The line intersects BC at point X. Draw another line parallel to side AB and is tangent to the circle as well. The line intersect BC is labeled as Y. Draw the circumcircle of the triangle. Connecting A and I and extend it to the other side of the circumcircle and label the intersection at point P. You may notice that the line AI seems pass through the intersection of the two parallel lines. In other words, the three lines are collinear. This is indeed true. We will prove it later. The midpoints of AC and AB are labeled as K and L respectively. We want to prove that angle KIL plus angle YPX is equal to 180 degrees. Before we dive in the solution, let's look at a generalized form. The problem use an inscribed circle. So the circle is tangent to all three sides of the triangle. As a matter of fact, only two tangents to AB and AC are necessary. So the, the circle is not necessarily tangent to the side BC, as we can see. So when we move I down, angle LIK is getting smaller, but the angle XPY becomes larger. Their total sum is still 180 degrees. Keep moving the center I until the two parallel lines meet at point P down there. This is an interesting special case. Two pairs of parallel lines form a parallelogram. So angle A is congruent with angle P, which is originally X, P, Y. What we need now is to prove angle A plus angle L, I, K equals 180 degree. This is equivalent to A, L, I, K acyclic. We can also move the point I up and the circle is getting smaller. The equality would still hold. Another special case is when I is collinear with L and K. In this case, angle L I K is 180 degree and the other angle X Y uh, X P Y is zero. Keep moving up. The angle LIK is greater than 180 degree on the upper side. Also, the position for X and Y switch the directions. However, if we define the measures of the angles to be the one less than 180 degrees, the sum would still be 180 degrees. One more special case, when I is approaching to point A, the graph degenerated into a cyclic quadrilateral. The sum of two opposite angles is about 180 degrees. We will prove the original form of inscribed circle. You will see the tendency of the circle to BC 
is never used at all, either directly or indirectly. The starting point is the parallelogram formed by two pairs of parallel lines, A, M, J, N. It has an inscribed circle tangent to all four sides. So it is more than just a parallelogram. We denote the four tangent point of the circle as D, E, F, and G, respectively. And we further assume the side lines AD equals A and DN equals B. Then AE and AD have the same length, which is A, also NG equals ND, which is B. By symmetricity, we have JG and JF equals A on the top side, and ME and MF equals B, similar to ND and NG. Then all four sides of the parallelogram AN and J, JM, MA, all have the side length A plus B, so it is a rhombus. Its diagonal intersect at the center of its inscribed circle I. In other words, the line AI passes J. This establishes the collinearity of three lines we mentioned earlier. The diagonals of the rhombus also the bisectors of each angles. So we denote the measures of the four small angles at A and J as alpha. I'm going to use this later for angle chasing. The diagonals AJ and MN also bisect each other. Therefore, I is the midpoint of AJ. We have another couple of midpoint. L is the midpoint AB and K is the midpoint AC. So I is the midpoint of AJ. As a result, LI and IK are the midlines of triangles ABJ and AJC, respectively. So these two midline are parallel to their base, respectively. As a result, angle LIK is congruent to angle BJC. Our original target is that angle LIK plus angle XPY equals 180 degree. Now, we transfer to a new target, the angle BJC, BJC plus angle XPY equals 180 degree. This can be done through angle chasing. We claim angle PBC equals alpha, PBC here. This is because the inscribed chord theorem PBC and the PAC share the same chord PC. Therefore, quadrilateral BXJP, BXJP is cyclic because one of the angle B is alpha and at the same time, the opposite side as J is exterior angle also has a measure alpha. Therefore, using the inscript chord theorem again, the angle XBJ equals XPJ because they share the same chord XJ. We denote these two angles as measure beta. Similarly, CYJP is also cyclic and we have angle YCJ equals 
angle YPJ, YCJ, and YPJ. We denote them as major gamma. As a result, one of our target angles, XPY, has measured beta plus gamma. And therefore, the sum of the two angles, BJC plus XPY, simply BJC plus beta plus gamma. Is this 180 degree? Let's see. BJC plus beta plus gamma, that is the sum of three angles of a triangle. Thank you for watching.